The field of green chemistry is all about finding chemical processes or products that cause less harm to the environment. The key word here is less harm. If a new technology causes the same amount of harm or more harm than the incumbent technology, then it's not green. If you've developed a new green technology, hopefully incorporating the 12 principles of green chemistry into its design, how can you find out if your technology is in fact greener than the incumbent technology? Mass-based metrics like E factor and atom economy are not particularly convincing because they don't measure impact on the environment. Life cycle assessment is more convincing, but it's very difficult, time consuming and requires training that most chemists don't have. However, there are some easy steps that you as a chemist or chemical engineer can take that don't require any special training other than uh, undergraduate chemistry to figure out if your technology has a green advantage over the previous best technology. So you're going to do the following exercise for each of the two technologies, your new one and the one it would replace, which is the incumbent technology. For each of those two technologies, take a look at the chemicals involved. And if you want to do a more thorough analysis, look at the chemicals that those chemicals were made from. For each of those two technologies, then evaluate the chemicals on the following impacts and then compare. So let's start with acid rain or acidification. Look for gases amongst the chemicals that might cause acid rain. Specifically look for gases other than N2 that contain nitrogen, sulfur, chlorine, bromine, or fluorine atoms. Here are some gases that would cause acid rain. They're either acidic or they get oxidized in the atmosphere to something that's acidic. Here are some example gases that are not of concern for acid rain. If one of the technologies you're comparing emits more acidification gases than the other, then probably that technology is worse for acid rain. Persistent organics. Look for polymers that don't decompose readily in the environment. This reference will help you to identify which those polymers are. Also look for small molecule organics that are likely to be persistent. The Bosling rules of thumb are helpful in this regard because they train you very easily to recognize the kinds of compounds that are going to be persistent. Does either of the technologies you're comparing use a greater quantity of persistent organics? Watch out for organic compounds that might bioaccumulate. So looking specifically at the organic chemicals you've already identified as being persistent, do any of them have a log KOW, meaning the octanol water partition coefficient, greater than 4.3? If they do, then they're likely to be bioaccumulative. There are some easy log KOW predictor software uh, websites available on the web. And there's also commercial software like ChemDraw that allows you to predict log KOW if you can't find an experimental value. Ecotoxicity should be important too. Look up the LC50 values for Daphnia magna or fish for each of the organic and inorganic chemicals in your system. These data are most easily found in safety data sheets, STS. Here's a chart that shows some typical values for common chemicals. What about global warming? There are two things to look for here. One is energy consumption. How much energy does the technology use? Does it require distillation of water or distillation of high boiling liquids? The other thing you can look for is does it release or use powerful greenhouse gases in the technology? Note that some greenhouse gases are worse than others. Here's a logarithmic scale comparing different gases for their global warming potential. Eutrophication is the over-fertilization of rivers, lakes, and even the oceans. It's a high risk if your technology uses compounds containing phosphorus and a medium risk for compounds containing nitrogen atoms. Flammability is a risk if your technology uses liquids or gases that have a flash point below 93 degrees C. Also, if your process operates at a high temperature, are there any chemicals with flash points below that operating temperature? Here are some typical flash points for common organics. Human toxicity. Look for LD50 rat oral or LC50 rat inhalation values. Here are some typical values you can find for common chemicals and compare. Carcinogenicity. 
Are any of the compounds used in the technology known or suspected of being carcinogens? If yes, how much is being used? Use safety data sheets as the best way to find carcinogenicity data. Ozone depletion. Look for compounds in the technology that have one or two carbon atoms, are volatile or gaseous, and have halogen atoms. Don't worry about dichloromethane and chloroform, they don't really cause very much ozone depletion. Here's some example compounds compared for their ozone depletion potential. Resource depletion is a real risk if the technology uses a large amount of rare elements. Here is a list of those elements in decreasing order of depletion risk. Resource depletion is also a risk if your process uses large amounts of non-renewable resources such as coal, oil, or peat. Smog formation is a risk if any of the organic chemicals are volatile or gaseous and are being used in significant quantities. Here you can see a comparison of the smog formation potential of example organic compounds. Finally, water consumption should be relatively easy to calculate. How much water does the technology use? Remember, we're not looking to quantify any of the above unless that's um, feasible for you to do so. What we're looking for is differences. For any of these different impacts that I've discussed, is your technology likely to be better or worse than the incumbent technology. Those differences are what you're gonna to use to develop your argument for why you believe your technology is a green advance. I hope this has been helpful. Here are some references for further reading. I look forward to reading about your new technology in the journal Green Chemistry.